Listen, Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. Fume sent us the, the products. <laughs> Sometimes during the podcast, I'm over here playing with it. Like the magnet part, I don't know what about it. It is a finger fun fidget thing to do. Join Fume in accelerating a humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code RIVALRY to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Head to tryfume.com slash RIVALRY and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Hey guys, again, Papa Drag Queen. I'm going to be in Atlanta at the Atlanta Symphony on December 30th, the eve of New Year's Eve. Please spend your time with me. You can go to seethedragqueen.com to, to hear some hilarious jokes. And maybe I'll wear like a festive Christmas outfit. Mm, and guys, you can catch me in Orlando and Tampa. I'm going to be at the Orlando Improv on December 6th and the Tampa Improv on December 7th. So if you in Florida, come see your girl Monet Exchange because I'm retiring these jokes, y'all. This year, this is the last time you can hear these motherfucking jokes. So come see me do these jokes in Orlando and Tampa. And y'all, Sibling Rivalry Live is coming to San Francisco at the Castro Theater on January 5th. Now, I know we have had some... We swear. We swear. This is the final day. We will be in San Francisco on January 5th for Sibling Rivalry Live. So snatch up these last tickets and sell us the fuck out. What's up, Ma? I'm gonna try to see if I can fill my brows in the camera. Oh, okay. I'm, actually, I'm gonna close my. No, I'm not gonna. You're gonna get me fucked up. What, you gonna try to have me guide you through it or something? Was that was that the plan? Yeah. Oh. I mean, th this feels like pretty visual content for a podcast, you know? Well, then they should. They, no, everyone is seeing this under the, under the YouTube. Also, if you want to see the. Wait, should I go down? You know when you look in the mirror, you can't tell whether you're going like, I need to go this way. I, How's I, that? I do not have that problem. When, I look, when I'm looking in the mirror, I do not have that problem, personally. It's not great, but it's better. Okay. I'm listening. How was your day? What did you do today? I I came to Germany. I'm in, I'm in Cologne. Ooh, I've been um, to Cologne. I love Cologne. Well, here we are. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm at my hotel. Kicking it, maxing, relaxing, cruising on, relaxing, shooting some people all outside of school. Oh my God, um, I started reading the Jada, the Jada Pinkett book. Very it? interesting. That's, she had this whole like um, rebirth when she went, when she went on this like ayahuasca trip. She did, she done it like a the, couple the, times. How many times has this bitch been born? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I'm towards the beginning of the book, so I, so at this point, I, I know she's done it twice, but she loses; she's done it multiple times, like more than twice. I have a really hard time with spiritualism, to be honest. It just kind of seems toxic, to be honest with you. And like, like spirituality in general, because isn't uh, AA is spiritual? Yes. No, it's not. See, it's really that, not. It's so it's so many different people, and again, I have a lot of. Uh, a friends and everyone has a different thing. Some people say it is spiritual. Some people say it's not. It seems like this, like no one can decide what it is. A, a, is, not not a, a is not a program based on spirituality. And any if people if people are having spiritual experiences, that doesn't mean that AA itself is a spiritual program. There's no there's no spirituality in AA. And a there's an entire chapter, most, there's most an entire people chapter say to me called, that AA is spiritual. That's what like they say. People who have. I'm going to reiterate, have someone more than can be having years. a spiritual experience, but that does not make, AA itself is not a spiritual program. There's no spirituality in the program. There's no, um, there's nothing in pro, in AA itself that lends itself to spirituality, with with the exception of it the acknowledges prayers. the existence. Say again? The prayers. So the, so the prayers aren't like a tenet of AA. 
You know what I mean? Like, for example, in New York City, we don't in New York City, they don't say prayers. In the New York City, they'll hold hands and they'll say, keep coming back. It works if you work it. So work it, you're worth it and live it. That's not a prayer. It's more like a chance to be like, hey, if you're here, keep coming back. It's like a reminder to people to just keep coming back and keep doing the program, keep doing the steps, keep working on it, keep working on it. But it's not so the ones that do the serenity pray. prayer. Are they are they like stepping out on the thing? Are they not supposed so, to do so that? We, so you do the you do the serenity prayer. But you're not actually like, unless you are a Christian. So what it is is that AA allows you to incorporate your faith if you have faith into the program. So if you have a faith or a belief system, it allows you to use the God of your understanding and incorporate mm-hmm. it into your sobriety and mm-hmm. how you can uh, apply those things. Um, but there's also an entire an entire chapter uh, to the agnostic meaning the people who either don't believe in God or can't prove that there is a God and who aren't who aren't doing off off any sort of a faith based program but they just want to get sober. And it's called the chapter to the agnostics, which is very popular in AA, especially in New York AA where a lot of people aren't religious. Um well, uh, but, but uh, AA does but AA does allow itself to incorporate spirituality into the program that exists, which itself is not spiritual. Well I'm I I, I again I'm not I'm not an AA person I can use any of that. I'm just saying like I've had like Conversations with AA people are like, well, it absolutely is spiritual, and like that's their there, understanding. There is of what a it line is. in it that says you'll have a spiritual awakening. There's a line in the um, um, having had a spiritual awakening, um, but it's it's not it's not in the way. It's not like ayahuasca spiritual. I it's know, not no, like, I'm not, no one, no one is. Saying, I'm not saying it's ayahuasca. I'm not saying it's 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 acid spiritual or whatever. I'm just saying that. There is a, but it's also, but it's, but, it, but it's also, it's not yoga it spiritual. Being a spiritual experience. Yeah, but I'm saying, it, like, it's not yoga spiritual. It's not woo woo spiritual. It's not um, religious spiritual. It's not med- It's, it's, it's not spiritual. Spirit- not really. I mean, not the, the short answer is not really. Like, it, it it allows spirituality, and even though it does say the line having had a spiritual awakening, even though that is one of the lines in the steps themselves the program i find is actually quite uh practical and uh and and easy for someone to follow if they don't have any sort of a spiritual uh connection to the world it's actually really easy to but it's also really easy to to follow if you have a deep spiritual connection to the world and even if you're incredibly faithful um through religion because it just kind of uh it's it's a really loose framework while being while also being incredibly rigid as well do you know what but also I've... people will call but bitch, people people call anything i know people call them doing their makeup spiritual people just be tossing the word spiritual around i know people who call cooking spiritual i know people who call editing youtube video spiritual i know people who call you know, but you, know, you know someone that calls editing a youtube video a spiritual experience bob yeah people come who, on people who find editing Yes, people who find editing so editing um footage to be a spiritual process for them because they're by themselves, they're looking at footage of themselves or other people. Yes, and I'm not here to judge anyone for finding that spiritual. Who do I know them? There are people who find the process of like meticulously looking over something. Okay, spiritual. Jacob is Jacob is the twelve steps. The third one says that's the step I just read. Having had a spiritual awakening, I, that's what I was just talking about. He's the third step. What about number five? Make- admitted to God to ourselves. And number six, ready to have. So God. when we say God, we don't all. They don't always mean God as in the God of heaven. Sometimes for some people, God means like great orderly direction. For some people, it may God be YouTube. Means a group of, so for some people, well, there is a thing in a where God could mean anything. For some people, God means group of drunks. For some people, God is. For some people, God is the program. It's just. It's just something that has more, something in the world that has more power than you. So I think for that some we're both saying the same right. thing. I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying not. that is true. I, I. I think we're both saying the same thing. But I think that we're not. That is like whatever your spirituality is. It's a spiritual experience for you. Like that's helping you get sober. No, we're not saying the same thing. I don't have spirituality. I have no spirituality. That's why I say we're not saying the same thing because I have no but, spirituality. So. This one, this like, what I'm, what I'm saying so, so sometimes for people for people in AA the, the the concept of God is very very loose right so it's just it just means that something that something that has a little more power than you do in specific situations and for some people it is the room itself so what is your itself. God so when you read the, the, these steps what, what when when you read this what are you referring to as your God well sometimes I think of the program itself and I think of um, the concept of um, coincidence and circumstance. So that in itself is like your spiritual th- relationship. It's to not that. Like spiritual. Is- I'm not spiritual. You keep telling me I'm spiritual. I'm not spiritual. 
you keep trying to in, in, in but, put okay, spirituality because okay, because because I'm trying to understand if you when you when you're referencing God in the steps and the ones that Jacob just pulled up the three six nine whatever whichever ones they are. So I like, mean, step one has God in it. Well, right. So what well, step okay, one is up. Of all the steps that have God in them, right? When you when you're reading that chant or that uh that prayer or that step, when you're reading that thing, like you're referencing a God of something, like you're you're not talking about nothing. You're not just saying it and meaning nothing because obviously it it works. So like it's like what referring to the program, the program itself is the higher power in this situation for you. Yeah, for me again, it's different for everyone. Everyone is something different. That's why okay. I say I don't find spirituality. I don't find spirituality in makeup, but I know people who find putting on makeup to be a spiritual process. But for me, it's not. But I don't think I can say that makeup is inherently spiritual just because people find spirituality through makeup. But I mean, I think that's that's hard to cut and dice when there is God throughout the entire thing and referencing your higher power. Jake, go ahead, Jacob. I think the one other important thing to note is I think AA was started in like 1935. So like at its conception, it was like very God heavy. But yeah. because we've moved on a hundred years now, um, we still use that core outline. But I think people like are able to take and leave what they want and sort of right. use that outline. Yeah. So so AA, was, so, so, so AA was founded in Akron, Ohio, and it was Bill, and, Bill. Bob Bill and, and Steve. Oh, Bill and Steve. Bill and Bob. Bob. Yeah. Yep. And Bill and Bob were both very were both Christian, but then other people other people who were not Christians wanted to get sober as well, but they could not use the framework because it was so Christian. Ritual. And then Christian. they were like, "Well, maybe we need to take the Christianity out of this and make it so that anyone of any faith or of no faith, chapters of the agnostic, can still find a pro- a way to get uh, sober in the room in the rooms." Interesting. Can I tell you something that makes me feel sober? Something that I want to be uh, sober from? That is dairy and cheese. I guess we're changing the subject. Dairy and cheese. Do you feel drunk on dairy and cheese? We we're, 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 we're have to get into the advice, um, Uri. And I just wanted to... Oh, shit. This is an advice episode. Do you feel yeah. drunk off dairy and cheese? I really do. Like, I had... I made the stupid decision to have a fucking nachos last night from a taco truck here in L.A., and I got, and when I say the thing was like covered in cheese and I ate every drop of it in the middle of the night, girl, I was like, I immediately regretted that decision. And I think that in my, um, in this first uh, third of my life, I have now at the end of it realized that dairy is not my friend and I cannot eat cheese like I used to, girl. I am, being 33 is a glass of milk or a box of cheese ruining the rest of your next day. I feel horrible. Maybe it's time for you to go uh, vegan. Uh, I don't know about all that, but definitely um, dairy free, or less not not not, not, not copious amounts really... of it. I need to like really chill on the on the on the on the cheese. For some people, going vegan is a spiritual process. Maybe it's worth giving it a a shot to try a sketch of veganism, even if you do it just for a month. It's really no, I don't believe it's spiritual. It if they now. had if they had like a no no dairy for the agnostic, then I can get into that. I was vegan for three years, and I'm and I'm not spiritual. So you can try my. Is, there, is there a book you can recommend? Um. Yeah. Uh. Fork. What is it? Forks over knives. That's a documentary. It's isn't it? Forks over knives. I think it's a book too. Yeah. Um. A lot, a lot of people cite There's that also, book. There's also um, a went. really great vegan. There's a really great web series called The Plant Based Way with Monet Exchange. <laughs> Well, the plant based way, part? we talk about doing both. <laughs> Jacob Ritz. You talk about um, not, you, you talk well, about not going vegan on a, on, a, on a show called The Plant Based Way? No, we talked about we talked about um eating meat and not eating meat and finding there are some plant based things I enjoy. Like I love the chicken nuggets. Um and other things, but I have not found a vegan cheese that I enjoy. Kim Everyone said she likes found one that's really food. good. It's so weird to me when people go, they don't eat plant like people are like, I don't eat plant based food. Like, everyone eats plant based food. Like everyone eats a vegan meal. But I think that there's meat specifically like meat substitutes. Like I've had plant based meat substitutes and they're not good. Like I've had someone, someone's that are that they try to do this like mince plant based thing and it's like a 
So it's like a ground beef, and it does not taste good to me. I don't eat that. I'm like, woof. I Man, don't I've had that. meat-based food that doesn't taste good. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is true. But I think there is like this like chalky, but also that's probably and more so in how it's prepared than the actual meat itself, right? And I think that this might it was just like it had just it just had like a chalky texture. Like I felt like I was eating like wet chalk, and I just didn't enjoy that 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 taste. In my time as a, as a vegan, I realized that um, that it's kind of the same thing with um, this essentially the same thing in regards to vegan foods as well. It's just kind of in the way that in the way that you cook them. There's this guy on on um, YouTube or TikTok who his thing is like he takes his dad trash food, like he'll bring him like a hungry man meal, and then he'll be like, "Dad, can you make this gourmet?" And then his dad takes the hungry man meal or takes a takes a a Burger King sandwich or he'll take like a, a Chipotle burrito bowl and then he just turns it into gourmet food. And it's so interesting when you just take the same ingredients that would be considered junk food or garbage or bad food and then it's just prepared in a new way. It elevates the I mean, to be, I haven't tasted this food to know I was that to say, it, it might good. look good, but does it taste good? I mean, maybe I, mean, maybe I want to thank for the, for the talk. You know, people, but I, I was, I, I found out two of my favorite TikTokers, not two, one of my favorite TikTokers, bitch, fake ass videos. Like a lot of them are like, are fake videos. They're all doing fake videos. They all do fake videos. And I really find for some, for some reason, it really, it, I don't know why it annoys me so much that they're faking these things, but it, it, I, I don't have enough words to explain why, but it really irritates me. I mean, there was this one video of um this guy who's always like doing these like videos and he's like going through these filters and then he like always gets bad options and i'm like you're redoing it and i know you're redoing it or people who put their put their camera there's a couple put the camera up and they'll argue they pull pranks on each other put the cameras just like on the dashboard and i'm like you're not pranking each other you're not pranking. Right. you're both in yeah. on it and you're and the acting is also really bad yeah, sometimes the prank ones, and I'm like, girl, that's so obviously faked. But I mean, but sometimes they really fool you. I mean, maybe for maybe I'm just an idiot, and I'm like, oh my god, I, I believe this 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 video. I'm like, and then someone I, I fell into a, a, a Twitter thread of them exposing them, and I was like, oh shit, that was all fake. I feel so lied. Everything to. on TikTok is fake. In fact, I'll tell you some more fake stuff when we get back from this break. This is just a regular episode, now, I guess. So what I so I like what it shirt. is so. Thank you. It's uh, I got it in um in uh Greece. A little on the nose, I know. I but, know. Wow, Bob. That's like going to St. Lucia and getting a fucking shirt with a with a fucking breadfruit on it. And I probably would if they had them. I really would. And I would disown. Yeah, you. I want. I want to. I want. I want to be like this is my Greece shirt. I, I I go to airports and I get the hoodie with the name of the town on it. We know, honey. If I go to if I go to New York City, I want an I Heart New York shirt. That's what I want in my life. Bob, can we catch it really quick? I'm so stressed out. You didn't ask Wait, me why I'm stressed you, out. You see, I'm stressed out. out. You didn't see it. You don't. You even care that I'm stressed out. I don't. Before you tell me that you're stressed out, I want to um, loop around to this last thing I want to say about the fake TikTokers. Um, what drives me crazy is like I found this out recently. The singers, they record their videos of them singing, and then they go back and do vocal production on the video. Yeah, yeah. And well, that's upload. that's obvious. But it looks like they're just like singing. To the thing, not not by the way, not into a microphone, not not into it, not in a studio, just singing to their phone, and yeah, it's not. It's only it. obvious to people. That's only obvious to people who who are singers. Those of us who who don't who aren't singing. I'm like, I thought they were. I thought it was just like you pick up your phone, and you start singing to it. They're doing vocal mm -hmm. production on these handheld videos. Oh yeah, for sure. Because because I mean, so, so many people are being discovered on TikTok, and there's so much currency in. And hopefully your video going viral, and that and you be you becoming the next Ice Spice or the next Tyler or whatever it is. So I think people, yeah, they like they do everything to make sure that they sound the best they could possibly sound, just in case. Why are you stressed out? It's my family. You don't have to say it with the deep ass breaths. <laughs> I had to. I like you don't want to tell. I need to let the air out. So my family, you know, okay. my house is, I've been rushing to get my house ready for Thanksgiving, the, my house that I'm moving into. You're Russian now? I'm Russian. Do I'm, I'm Russian shit. Jewish. Damn. Me and Jinx. That, 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 was, that, was, that was one of the gifts she gave me from All Star 7. She's not Jewish. She is. Jinx isn't Don't. Jewish. She is. She did she a whole about it. I know. I know. I know, and I said that to you. I, I know, no, no, but she, she's. 
Jinx, Jinx is of Jewish heritage, but she was raised Catholic. But she is like her mom um, is Russian Jew. But she did a but she did like a blood test and was like, I'm not Jewish. I'm not that's not news that I'm breaking. She and she went live and she was like, I did a test and I found that I wasn't Jewish. She did? did I, am I making that up? I don't know. Like I, don't, I, don't know this, I don't know this video. I do not know that. So I cannot say yes or no. Maybe based, the, based on the uh, research I've done, she was raised Catholic and found out she was of Jewish descent when she was an adult. But uh, we can do more research, but Jinx tweeted a couple days ago that she's Jewish. She 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 was um she she shared some like ceasefire stuff and stuff about the about the um, Israeli Palestinian war and someone said uh something about anti semitism she retweeted it saying but I'm literally Jewish so that was up until like th- uh, four days ago three days ago so maybe I'm wrong don't listen to me listen to Jinx <laughs> yeah and then so I'm getting my house ready we're rushing 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 like and there's a lot of like things to get the floors get the blah 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 and then because I'm my I'm flying my family in here like my aunts my grandmother my cousins they're coming to have things you know, at my new house like it's gonna be a whole big family thing everyone's emotional or whatever so just in the mix the midst of everything I had to get the internet and like the power and everything and then today I got a, a gas bill for my current place and I was like oh um I was like oh let me I, I was like shit I didn't put the gas let me make sure call call them to put the gas the earliest date they can come and put the gas is the twenty eighth. Which is five days after Thanksgiving. Oh, which is order, order, order. No, order. the whole thing is that they're bringing, bitch, they're bringing oxtails from like across. They want to like cook this like Thanksgiving dinner. It's like a whole thing. Maybe you should get some Bunsen burners. I'm going to offer options. I, I know. Or I'm going to have my place here. Or a couple of, uh, or a couple of uh, cooker, or a couple of uh, microwave ovens. Maybe Not microwave I can. Oven, toaster oven. Maybe I can Air like fires. maybe I can get some hungry man meals and see if my grandmother can make them gourmet. You know, so, something that could be cool for TikTok. Possibly, is your brother a chef? My brother's not coming. He has his kids and his wife. They do their own thing. Oh, um, they said my brother. Who did you say? You said my grandmother. Yeah, but it's just like oh, so stressful. I mean, I'm gonna have my place here, so I can come back here and can cook. But all the everything's gonna be at my other place. So just my grandmother gonna be sitting here by herself, just with no furniture, nothing, just cooking. Are oxtails expensive? Yes. This guy, these guys yeah. were just arrested in Atlanta for, <laughs> for taking, for like stealing oxtails. They, they, they had like a thousand dollars worth of oxtails. He's really got Atlanta upside down. Niggas that have stolen oxtails now, this is crazy. I um, know. Oxtails but, are so expensive. Well, I saw a video online of someone, this this guy trying to cook oxtails for his girlfriend or his wife, his par- his partner. And he's like, he's like a white guy. He's doing a really bad job. And he's like, she's like, what's in there? He's like, I got some salt and some pepper, and I and I and I have the the potatoes. And that's how you like them. And then she was like, but that's not that's not how you do it. And then the comments the comments were saying two things. One one comment was like, he's really he's trying. The other comments were like, that is a thousand dollars worth of oxtail. They were being a bit facetious, facetious, but I didn't realize that oxtails were so expensive. Yeah, I'm gonna say how much is. I never uh, grew up eating them. You you didn't? Yeah, so I thought southern people eat oxtails. Some of them do. I just I didn't grow up eating oxtails. Oh, we we grew up eating oxtails. Oxtails was and when 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 it was made when oxtails were made for Sunday dinner, it was it happened like once every like two months. It was like bitch. It was a Sunday I would look forward to. Oxtails were and it's so the good. tail of an actual ox of a of a cow. Oh, it's from a cow. Yes. What do they call it? Cow tails. I don't know. Just call it oxtails. So oxtails well, range. Uh, uh, oxtails are about roughly about twenty twenty seven dollars a pound, which is a lot. And how much is a uh, rump roast? A rump roast? Rump, rump roast, like pig butt. How much is pig butt? I've never, I've heard of rump roast. I don't think I've ever per pound a rump roast per pound. Um, I'm going at Vons twenty dollars a pound. Okay, my last question: How much is um like a hog head? How much is a, a hog, head? hog head? Yeah. Okay, you're you're so you're you're telling me you're gonna talk about eating cow tail, but when I mention the thing that something you you you're scrunching your face up, six dollars. How dare a you? Pound. Six dollars a pound average. How dare you scrunch your face up? I don't do you know. Do, do, do your family cook hog heads? 
Yeah. So yeah, people cook hog heads. Yeah. And you can also make hog head cheese. Um, make cheese out is, of it? Uh, made, it's not cheese. Actually, I don't know. I mean, they call it hog head cheese. I don't think it's actual cheese. It's just from the it's from the brains of the of the of the pig. Wow, this is so insensitive. I told you about me and cheese, and you're gonna just bring up cheese casually on the podcast. I told you how I'm with the cheese right now. Well, I you think hog head cheese is is is, is, is lactose free. So you're probably. I think I found the cheese. Also, by the way, do you know that like Parmesan and like Parmigiano. a lot of hard cheeses don't don't see si. si. don't have uh don't have lactose in them. Parmigiano and um, Romano. I mean, like, like certain 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 cheeses don't have lactose in them. Isn't that interesting? Interesting. Well, how do they also so, do they get the lactose from the cow? So if they are, are these cheese not made from cow? No, it is made from cow, but like the lactose is like aged out or something or cooked out or something. I don't know. There's something about it. I, I read it online, then I Googled it and I was like, oh, wow, that's true. Should we start making our own cheese? No. No, it's it's very diff- it's a very difficult process. They, I, I, I I lived in Minnesota, near Wisconsin, and uh, they take cheese very seriously. It is a making cheese is quite a complicated process. I don't think wow. I like cheese that much. I mean, I like cheese, but not not enough to go into the cheese. I have no passion surrounding cheese. You remember that episode of Shit's Creek when they when when they try to steal when they try to get the um, the the milk, the cow milk, the dairy milk? I haven't seen too many. I just know, I just know folding in the cheese. All I know is about folding in the cheese. You fold it, David. Fold. David, David you have to fold in the cheese. I, I, how, how do you fold in the cheese? I can't teach you everything, David. Um, well, there's something I want to tell you because there's something you just mentioned that I wanted to bring up. Was it about the cheese? Cheese. Hog heads. Was it about the, uh, the, the rump roast? I can't remember. In. But I think that maybe what you could do is reach out to a catering company and have cater some food. And then because the caterers will bring uh, burners, because my family does catering too, and you can um, because I have I have a lot of cooks in my family, and um, well, then I come into LA though. <laughs> um, I, say, I will I will, um, I will I will I will I will fly Uncle Scotty to LA. You don't want Scotty's cooking? No 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 no. You don't want Uncle you Steve. don't want Scotty Uncle cooking. Steve. Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve. Yeah. You you eat Scotty cooking? And you want to? <laughs> ah! Bitch, these guys cooking if you want. You can be looking crazy as hell. He can grill though. He 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 can barbecue. He can grill. He can grill. I want to say he can barbecue. He can grill. Scotty can grill. He would say he can barbecue. It's just like I. But yeah, I I would reach out to a um. I would reach out to a company, a catering company, and because especially by the way now because all the catering companies are getting booked as as my family runs a catering company, and my my brother does, and um, one of the biggest issues is people trying to book thanksgiving catering last minute so you need to get a catering company now they will drop off the bunsen burners and ask them for extra burners and extra pans and you can put the oxtail on that well i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna call my aunt now after we get done and like figure out what the plan is because maybe they will just come and cook here i mean i have a full kitchen here in my apartment now you know i mean if we're gonna kick somewhere and ship i mean it but also, maybe they just take the load off and don't cook. You know what I mean? Maybe they just eat no, instead no, no, of cooking. No, no my, my grandmother's motherfucking cooking for Thanksgiving. Absolutely, she is. She absolutely is. It, this is, it's not like she doesn't have an option in this. It's not your <laughs> she you're forcing she her doesn't. to. Cecilia Gus. Oh, this is my grandma's full government name. Cecilia does not yeah, have the C- option. Free Cecilia. Justice for Cecilia. This is crazy. <laughs> we, need, we, need to hear, we need to hear Cecilia's voice. Honey. <laughs> she, may be your, she may be your grandmother, but she's someone's daughter. Okay, and she, she deserves, deserves to have a voice. So I uh, I saw a bunch of my high school friends. They came to my show at the Bell House on Thursday, and it was so good to see old high school friends. And it's like, so many of my friends have kids, and not just like one kid girl, like multiple, like three of my good friends. They have each of them has three kids. I was like, sure, you got three kids now, Candace? Three? My my um. One of my childhood friends, Ivory, who is my nephew's mother. Ivory Winters. Um, Ivory, yeah, her last name is Winters. That's crazy. Actually, her last name is Winters. I just realized her name <laughs> is Ivory. Is that where Ivory got her name from? No, her name, her name is not Ivory Winters. I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, but she's my nephew's mom, and she's one year younger than me, and she has six kids. Say six. Like one, the, one, the number after five. Yep, right before seven. I could, right before yeah. seven. 
But anyway, I said that to say also, um, and like doing this, doing a show in like your hometown, it just feels so good. And um, uh, 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 I was gonna say, something, I was gonna say something else. Oh, Mateo Lane opens nice for me at my show. show. Oh, that's lovely. Mateo is is a real. I mean, I'm so proud of Mateo. Mateo opened for me at the Gramercy. No, that was Zach at Caroline's. At Caroline's, um, yes, he did years he ago. Maybe like six, maybe like eight years ago. And what a treat I got to open for him at the fucking Gramercy. Not Gramercy. Um, a beacon. beacon. Yeah. And then Mateo just did Carnegie oh, Hall, me. girl. Fierce. Which can I give a really a really uh, controversial take? Carnegie what? Hall is kind of ugly. Like it looks kind of ugly. I want to say it's okay. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, it's a hall. It's an opinion. In my opinion, that's kind of ugly. I mean, you're opinion that be that's not that it's not ugly, but there's no there's no proscenium, which is one of my big issues with Carnegie Hall. There's no proscenium, so it's just from the floor to the ceiling, which by the way is very very high. There is no, but curtains. it makes for great sound, though. It makes for a great sound. I'm sure, but you know, some, somehow they have great sound over at uh, Radio City too. Somehow they have great sound at at the uh, at the at the the Winthorpe Theater. In fact, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that when we get back. When we get back. No matter what you're buying this season, when you use the Secure Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can build your credit score with on-time payments for everyday purchases. Plus, there is no annual fee or credit check when you get started. With Chime Checking Account, you can get paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Chime also offers fee-free overdraft with SpotMe, Overdraft up to $200 without fees with Spot Me, y'all. And when you set up a qualifying direct deposit, it all will work out for your good. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Listen, fees are a thing of the past. Monthly fees are out. Fees, fees, O'Hara. Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly, no minimum balance, no overdraft fees. Chime gives you access to 60,000 plus fee-free ATMs. There's more than the top three national banks combined. You can easily find one near you on the Chime app. And with Chime, you can send money and receive money, pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank account they use, and cash out your money Fee freeze. Start building your credit up today. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank in a member FDIC. Chime banking account and $200 qualifying direct deposits required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payments may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. <sighs> you know, there are a few things that bring me joy than giving my kitty fresh, delicious food. And that's why I love Smalls. Like seeing the way little Colleen's blue eyes light up when I pop that Smalls open, it really brings my heart joy and I love her so much. And that's why y'all gotta try too. Because if you're still feeding your cat kibble, now is the time to update your cat food with Smalls, y'all. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge and it's delivered straight to your door. I feel better personally for me knowing that my cat is not just chewing, chomping on some burnt kibble also, I don't have to open nasty cat food that makes my stomach hurt. Like, ew. At this point, you might be wondering, girl, why can't the cat just eat the kibble? Believe it or not, your cute little cat is a descendant of uh, 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 some Mufasas, the Simbas, the Nala's around the world, okay? And those cats like fresh protein, and your cat does too. Other cat brands know this, but yet they still choose to put their wallets first. They want to fill your cat food with mysterious products that your cat should not be eating. And when you see conditions happen, you wonder what had happened. They were eating bad food, girl. After making the switch to Smalls, 70% of cat owners report that their cats had shinier and softer fur and 90% report overall health improvements. Give your cat the gift of great cat food this holiday season. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code rivalry for 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. 
looking for a way to keep up with what everyone's talking about in the queer community? Okay, listen, then here's a hot tip. All you have to do is make Queerity a part of your daily routine. Queerity is your one-stop shop for pop culture and entertainment news. You want to discover the queer pop anthem of the moment? Queerity will keep you in the loop. You need to escape the workday with a behind-the-scenes tea from your favorite show? Queerity's got you covered on that one, too. But the best way to know that the Queerity readers are your people? Well, they voted us Best Podcast for this year's Queerity Awards, which proves they have excellent taste. Yes, honey, I'm a Queerity Award winner, honey. Reading Queerity literally feels like being at brunch with your friends, except you can do it at home, alone, on your couch, which is a lot easier. Did you know that Queerity also has a bunch of incredible sister sites, including LGBTQ Nation, covering the news that affects our community? Into, which celebrates diverse perspectives for young queer people and gay cities, a travel guide for finding the best queer hotspots in every single city. And best of all, each of these sites is LGBTQ plus owned and operated. So all of their content is by queer people for queer people. So visit queerty.com and make sure you are never left out of the conversation. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits, okay? We're not talking about some hypnosis from your crazy neighbor or your friend or some magic crystals. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Listen, Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it? Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habits easy. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting giving your fingers a lot to do, which is very helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I have to say, I love, you know, because Fume sent us the, the products, and I love how it looks, and it feels very heavy. Like, it's like a nice, perfect balance. And also, I literally, sometimes during the podcast, I'm over here playing with it. Like, the magnet part, I don't know what about it. It is a finger fun fidget thing to do. And the entire podcast, I'm usually like, unmagnetizing it and like sticking it back together. So I really enjoy that feature. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code RIVALRY to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Head to tryfume.com slash RIVALRY and use code RIVALRY to save an additional 10% off your order today. Quick question. Can you name th- four Broadway theaters? Um, the Schubert. And that's all I got. I can name the Winter Garden. Oh, yeah. The Gershwin. The Gershwin for where Wicked the, is. The Hirschfeld. And the Palace. I could probably name a few more if I thought hard enough. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't frequent Broadway shows. I saw Broadway shows here and there. I did not frequent shows a lot. So I, it's not something that. The did Men's you, Cough, the Amsterdam. Did you go see a lot of Broadway shows when you lived in New York? Like you go all the time? What would you say is a lot? Like, I've seen more than I, 10. Oh, I was going to say like one a month. No, not one a month. No, no, no. That's very expensive. Very yeah, expensive. but I a little birdie told me that you was you were you were you were the toast of the town, honey. She could afford to see one a month. I was the toast of the town, but I I but I was also working at the same time these shows are going on. True, you know. Yeah. Except Saturdays and Sundays and Fridays, and I was trying to rest. You didn't work Saturdays and Saturday? Friday. Friday, I didn't work Fridays and Saturdays. I worked. I worked yeah, I worked. You worked I'm about to say Sunday. That's Sunday, something else. Not right. I worked Sunday through. We did look queen together Sunday for years. I worked Sunday through Thursday. Right. Yeah, five days a week. I've been trying to explain to people about like that. And do some. Okay, here's here's a thought I had, and I really think New York could really benefit from this. And I just don't understand why it hasn't happened. I think that bars in New York City should start a salary. Right. You have somewhere like Hardware or like Justin and them. They have. They have hardware, pieces, playhouse, and this new bar balcony. That's four bars. If you put girls on salary and they can rotate between working these four bars, like you're get, like it, it's better for their it's better for the queens. 
And it's also and also benefits the bar because you're creating less competition because you're having these girls that are only working in your network of bars, and they're committed and devoted to you, like making like actual programming for specifically for your bar. And then uh, and, and for the queens, they have like they have they they can negotiate a salary that's that that is competitive, and they feel taken care of, and not just, and they and they don't feel as disposable as just week to week, month to month. You know what I mean? And you negotiate a salary when you when you're working for one employer. I mean, you can negotiate one employer, but like, I don't know. You know, I worked for a lot of, I worked for probably four or five different uh, companies and bar owners. Mm-hmm. I worked at uh, two of two of Bob Ponzarelli's restaurants, mm-hmm. bars. I worked at uh, two of Justin's bars. Mm-hmm. And I worked at, uh, what's his name from Boots? Monster. What's his name? Robert. Oh, Robert. And uh, Miguel from The Monster. And who used to own Therapy? What was his name? uh tom? tom tom yeah it was tom. tom um and i i like bouncing around between bars and neighborhoods and getting different experiences and having different people and also it gave me opportunities to work at places that i didn't get to normally work like uh out in queens or 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 up at no parking you know or um, for you though i, I didn't, I didn't really i was that's because you were a very popular queen and you know and you you know you, you and i are not like I everyone like, say it again I was what? You and I were in really peak positions. No, no, where no, we no, got, no, us, no, you and I. Back to me. Where we got to work, where we where we worked a whole lot and we got a lot of great opportunities. But for some girls that aren't as fortunate and don't have that same thing, like I think that it's a benefit because that happens a lot in Southern bars, right? Like you'll have like uh, uh, the Rose Room where they put you on salary and you're on staff there and you have three or four gigs a week. And you have like your fucking state. And but, but if you are someone like Justin and them, you are working in multiple neighborhoods. Do you, they have bars in all the neighborhoods? Well, except for Chelsea, they have one. In, they have two bars downtown in the village, and they have two in Hell's Kitchen. So you are seeing different. And, and, and the, the audience you get at fucking on Eighth Avenue is be sometimes very different than, than the Tenth Avenue folk. So you are getting like a, a diverse experience, and then you can say, and then if Bob Pontarelli, like, and then and then when your contract is up, maybe you do like a two year contract with with that with that with that company. Like you can like negotiate. Do you want to? Do you want to continue on with them, or then, or maybe Bob Pontarelli will like, hey, I want to offer you sixty thousand dollars a year now, and then, and I'm then that leads you with, with those Southern bars. There, they be in bar wars, girl. Who straight up bar war? The Southern Who? bars, they be in bar wars. Oh, yeah, Southern bars. Yeah, Trinity like, was telling like me this. If you, if, Baby, if you go to the other bar, you will you don't don't even set foot in here again. They've been like they're, they're the fucking bloods in the crips. They like they be wild in these streets. And and yeah. and there's a lot of um. Well, when I was I heard I heard things have been a little different lately. But back in my day, you were able to go between bars, and there was a camaraderie. And the shows, Not the bars no even work to the bars even work together. Back 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 in my day, um, therapy intentionally started their shows before industry so that people could literally all yeah. walk from one bar to the next and in and industry yeah. start their show later so they wouldn't cannibalize one another yeah and it was great and it it, it was like that up until i i was we, we started to help and also but to pick you know some time what you know who i blame we uh, yeah we yeah i mean new york shows are pretty good at starting on time most new york shows are really good at starting except on jasmine time, rice say. jasmine rice will start a show late with the last thing she do you know who i blame for like kind of the bars competing with each other oh who? I I should, say it. should I say his name? <laughs> Bitch, we are in our say. We are in our say our name their era. names. Say their Robert names. Robert from Boots and Saddle. Well, it was Boots and Saddle, but it worked for Boots and Saddle though, because Boots and Saddle was y'all. Boots and Saddle was crazy from Monday. <laughs> it worked for them, but not for anyone around them. It didn't, it didn't work for the monster. It didn't work for the Stonewall. It didn't work for um uh where are yeah. the clubs in the area at the time? Uh, pieces. It didn't work for um what Rock Bar. It didn't pieces. work for Rock Bar. P- pieces, yeah, pieces. Because what's happening is there was never not a show. It I had never crazy. seen anything like this in my life. How long? Because I, when I came on the scene, it was, that was already like the model. How long had that been going on though? But also when when I started Maybe. doing drag more, it got crazier. They started adding shows at like three o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, this is nuts. Maybe like it started like. T- so I started the scene in 2009, and Boots and Saddle didn't even have shows every day of the week. I used to do a Gag. Tuesday show there. I used to do a Tuesday night show there. And then 
I was working there for a while, and then I switched to Thursdays. And then one day they were like, "There's a show after yours now," and it was like, and I was like, "Okay." And it was um, what's that girl's name? She um, she was like a zoologist, and she, and she, Portia oh, Pink was her bitch. name. Who? No, no, no. Her name was her name was Portia Pink. Oh yes, Portia, anyway. the one that can sing. N- no, you're thinking Portia Live. Yeah. Portia Pink was this like random zoologist who was also a or a botanist or something. She did some kind of like uh wildlife science. According to you, she um, was a, a petrologist. A petrologist, yeah. The study of rocks. Petrology. No, that's not. That's geology is a study of rocks. No, petrology is a study of rocks. Yeah, clickety clack on your little your little your little um your little Stones and stuff. Study of stoning and rice petrology. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay to you. And also, it's I think not the geology of rocks, it's the science of rocks, nigga. Okay, nigra. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but, but so poor, so nigra. So Portia Pink, and and then this was like this was maybe two thousand eleven, maybe twelve, and then right around twenty like. 14, 15. Girl. They were like, now there's a show. Now there's a show before yours. Bootsy LaFerris now does a show before you. And it was, in, or since then, it was just, I mean. And y'all, and, and when I that, it, y'all just, it, it wasn't just his night. That model was go for like Sunday to Sunday. to Sunday. Like every show, there was a show after a queen and then before a queen. Not just Thursdays, every night of the week. And by the way, when I say after and before, I need you all to know that what I'm what I mean is like, if my show ended at my show ended strictly, strictly at eight fifty nine, because at nine o'clock, Portia Pink was on stage. That and was, I mean, was wild. It was like, and you couldn't go over even a second, and you couldn't start, and you couldn't be late even a minute. It was kind of fierce, though. Like that, like rolling into show. I, I will say, of the craziness of it, I thought that was fierce. That they because who was the bitch that was the head bitch in charge? Victoria, what is her name? Victoria Chase. Victoria Chase. She was. She was the madam. She was the HBIC. very much house mother. Very she much a, a real, a true house mother. She, I would say of all the girls in your city who act like house mothers. I think that Victoria Chase was the most house mothery of all of them. And then I would say next was me. No, then Shaquita. Shaquita is a house mother down. The house of Hall? Not like me. <laughs> no, Shaquita is more of a house mother than I. But, but okay, the house mothers were really me, Holly Day, Shaquita. Holly Day was a house what mother kind of who? Well, low key over it, low key at Look Queen, but we were unruly. But the, but her children, but, but we weren't her kid. When we say house mother, we don't mean they were like our parents. They oh, weren't like our bar. drag moms. They were they they were the entertainment managers. They were the they were the drag managers. They they booked the shows and all that stuff. I did um, not know Holly did that in Monster. I really did not know that. No Holly, no Holly, no not the Monster. I mean, well, okay, Holiday was really the Holiday was just Holiday was just the director of Queen. You're right, is what it was. She yeah. did one night. By the way, you know Galaxy Boss coming back. She has like Bitch, a, a weekly show. I've I done seen. Well, the gag is. I mean, can we? I want to go. I can't wait to see it. I don't give a fuck. The gag is she had tried to, she had sued Holly Day. And now Holly is having her in her show. I was, I saw that. I was Good. like, sue her again. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, no, it's not Holly Day's show. It's, it's Dallas's show, isn't it? Yeah, no, but no, Dallas, Holly, no, Dallas Holly, Holly, had her, the- Holly had her a queen. I saw the ad and I was like, she started to sue you, Pixie, Bootsy, and Brenda. And you have to imagine, imagine you trying to sue me. And me be like, yeah, come on, come on. Robbery. Honey, let me run it. If I sue you for anything, if I sue you for anything, you're already in jail. What I'm suing you for is, is jail time. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm suing you for, honey. And let me tell you, if I ever sue Monet, say, say your goodbyes to her because I, I will have built a case. Bob, let me that tell you even, something. Even, even, even Al Sharpton couldn't get her out of that, honey. You would need you you better call Saul if I sue you, honey. You better call Saul. <laughs> the amount of the amount of footages is I have on you, bitch, you're gonna be under the jail, scrubbing it, picking it clean with a damn fork. Honey, Saul Goodman couldn't get you out of you. You gonna you, you gonna be like uh, uh what's his name? And Tim Rob Tim Robinson and Shawshank Redemption crawling you out of jail, honey. I don't know who Shawshank or the Redemption is, but I know that I will get you. You've never seen Shawshank Redemption? No. Monet, how have you never seen Shawshank's Redemption? Bitch, have this you is ever like seen... one of the best movies. 
Have you ever of seen all time. Um, How Stella Got Her Groove Back? Of course I've seen How Stella Got Her Groove Back. You think I just turned black yesterday? Have you ever seen um, you think, you One think I Pond? Angela Bass- you think I just found out about Angela Bassett and Tay Diggs yesterday, bitch? Have you ever seen one um one one coconut through the to the left? You're making you're making up movies right now. I can tell by the way you're stuttering of the name. What's it called? What's it called again? One through the coconut. <laughs> yeah, light ass bitch. Also, why would you think I haven't seen How Stella Got Her Groove? Why would why would How Stella Got Her Groove Back be the movie you try to catch me with? Because you I'm don't a millennial. Like, you don't like you don't you're not you're not a rom com girly. Okay, Stella Got Her Groove. I don't want to call it a rom com. It's, it's not, not a rom com. Oh, sorry, sorry. You're not you're, you're, you're not like you a chick seen flick. Stella Got Her Groove Back. You're have you you're seen not, How Stella Got Her Groove you're Back? You're not a chick flick girl. Like you don't want you're not a chick flick girly. No, I'm not a chick flick girly, but I but I did grow up watching um uh movies like I Stella Got Her Back and um, Waiting to Exhale, I would say they're of the same vein. You know what I mean? Yeah, chick flicks. They're both chick flicks. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah. I, yeah. I used to watch chick flicks. I don't watch them anymore, but I used to watch chick flicks. Yeah. Uh, wait, how are we going to stop Kate Leopold? Kate Leopold was a banger back in the day, honey. You didn't watch Kate Leopold? <laughs> that was you, Kate Jack. Leopold is a gr- <laughs> Kate, Leop- Kate Leopold is a great movie. <laughs> The, uh, Viola Davis is in it. Yeah, it's a great it's, movie. The fact that you have seen Kate Leopold, I, I am, I am screaming inside. That is just so I seems like something love you would never love. Kate and Leopold so much. I but love you've never that seen movie. The Notebook. Like, I've seen The Notebook. I said oh. I don't like The Notebook. I didn't cry. You didn't like it. I, I, I wasn't crying like everyone else. Got it. Um, Wait, can but, we please oh, go back what to I was my about, um, What I was saying about Shawshank Redemption, Shawshank Redemption is, um, I think it was also um, Morgan Freeman's breakout breakthrough role. It was, no, it was seven like his was big, big role. Big role. Seven. Jacob, can you Google which one of those was first? What do you ask me, Monet? About putting girls on staff. No, so you're so you're saying do not go on staff. You're like because, but again, take yourself out of the equation. Think about girls who don't have five gigs a week. Like think about like that girl, like the girl who has like two, and like how that can benefit them, like being on salary. It's just really hard for me to consider consider others. That is clear. That now that is the <laughs> truest statement you have ever made on this podcast for sure. That is not. You know, it's not true. Um, I, I, I don't. I don't think it'd be. I don't think it'd be good for the culture of New York City. And I think that it would create more animosity between bars. And I think that once a girl wants to jump to another bar or even go patronize another bar, just be seen there. Like, it's, girl, some of these. When I hear the stories of these bar wars down south and how the girls can't even go to the other bars, especially not in drag, because the joy of the, of New York City for me was the bar hopping. It was going from to every bar in full drag, leaving your gig and going to tip a gig girl at another gig, or leaving your show and doing a spot at someone else's show. Oh, yeah, that was truly the joy of, of the nightlife for me. I being wonder able if to go still like that though. You you get like you pop in to one of your friends' show. They will let you do a number. You you could leave with an extra like sixty dollars from two one or two numbers, and if you turn turn the pussy. For two numbers, you could easily clear one hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, for sure. But like, uh, but to your point though, the competition gets is so wild. They're like the bars don't play like that anymore. It's yeah, it's kind of so, sad. I there are so many drag queens right now. There are so many drag queens. It's crazy. So many bars. There's so many bars. There's in the past, I've I've heard of four of them. I can only name two right now. The Hush and uh, uh, no three Hush Balcon. And verse, ver- but that one that I saw you that are me and RC and Dewan saw you at that that bar. Mm-hmm. There's so many bars. I randomly, up. Ra- I randomly ran into uh, Kim Chi and um, who's the guy from Try Guys? Dan- Eugene. I don't know. Uh, Eugene. I just like I was walking on the street. And I was like, Oh, Kim, Eugene, what's going on? Where recently? <laughs> they were leaving verse. Recently, like, I run into the girls, huh? This was uh, um, during Pride. Got it. The, the, so the, I think I think Eugene it was, was dressed in some fucking slut. It was he was dressed so slutty. Eugene it was so it was, slutty. It was Pride girl, of course he was. And he's hot. I wasn't. That was not judgment. That was admiration. I was liking <laughs> what I was seeing. Oh, I see that you met your little crush. You went to their show. I said, oh, was, she's stepping was, out. It was it was a great show. Yeah, you know, I was like, "Hey, how y'all doing?" Um, it was a very good show. <laughs> so insanely talented. You all don't get to go see if you don't go see Duran Bernard, you're wild. 
Duran Bernard has just some. If you also great walking around town music. If you want to walk and vibe, one thing I don't. It's a there's a, there's a lot of weed smoking references. Which whenever I hear weed smoking, I'm, I get taken out because I'm like I don't do that. It just doesn't speak to me normally. Um, but really, really beautiful music. And I just saw a, him a vocal a vocal gymnast. His voice is is insane. You know, you know he used he used to do BGVs for Erica, Erica Badu. I know. Um, I saw him no, live. Don't when, at BGVs. The, uh, don't ever use terminology like that again with us. Don't try to be industry cool. Anyway, he, 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 he used to do BGV for Erica Badu. Background I, vocals. I that's don't do that. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> I saw him live at the LGBT. Why you cough like a kindergartner. Cover your mouth. What what is going on? Cough like a four year old. This is my microphone. <laughs> this is my microphone. This is my space. It's not MySpace. We're on YouTube right now. <laughs> no, actually, we're on. Oh, and today, I want to shout out people who are getting their cars washed. If you're washing your car listening to this, hey. Damn, we're going to have like two people. Because <laughs> do you listen to, do you listen to? Your... Yes. And Wait, LA, do, you it takes your, like... do you wash your own car? Do you Hell wash your no. own car? I take, it, I take it to the place. When I'm waiting, it'll be like 45 minutes. Yes, Bob. I patronize small said. businesses. I don't. I don't. Said, I don't. Hell I no. patronize small business businesses so I can help, so I can stimulate the economy. Monet said, "Hell no, hell no." The only the last time I washed my car was my dad's car when I was like seven years old in our driveway. That was the last car I washed. I don't wash my car either. <laughs> you are such a fucking. Well, where would I general. wash my car? I don't, I don't have a hose. Yes, your building has a hose, and the thing I've seen—I've been to your building and seen someone washing their their car. No, not washing their car. Yes, I have in that back alley, the one that you exit out of. That probably no. I don't think we have access to that. <laughs> no, I drop it off to get washed in time. I need to get a wash. Sometimes, I, but I, the thing is, I'd be gone for so long, and I'd be home for like three days. I'm like, I don't want to spend one of these days washing the car. Bob, it's forty five minutes. I said what I said. What do you, you just have to sit outside the washing station for forty five minutes? Yeah, well, yeah, you, yeah, you, you, I, you, yeah, you, you have to like leave. Like, you can't. You have. That's the thing about doing. You have to like find something to do. Like walk, get an Uber, go somewhere. I do love walking. Student rivalry. Well, on the way to um, on the way to our management's office, there is a great. It's a great strip of walking. I love that walk. Actually, I've never done it, but it looks like it'd be fun. I'm afraid I've never actually taken that walk ever, but it looks like it'd be a great area to walk in there's a big parking lot over Can by you the elaborate island. on that <laughs> no there's there's a there's a there's a strip mall in this one area with a huge parking lot which i love there's but there's, but it's also a residential as well so like one side of the street is like restaurants and like uh businesses and the other side is like these houses and apartments that which look really really cool i love walking through neighborhoods when we were rehearsing just be in, careful in, the neighborhood. in long island we were rehearsing in, for long, in Long Island. I loved walking in the neighborhood. That neighborhood was so, I felt so safe. Except one time there was a dog, because it was it, it was like a. Um, why why, why was, are you scared of the it dog? Was like a, it was just a big dog. I don't, big dogs are kind of scary. Oh, you mean like the the big white bitch just in your fucking building, and then when she starts galloping at me like she's a fucking like she's a goddamn stallion, and you're like, "Monet, what's her wrong?" Name you mean lady. like that? Her name is her name is Lady. No, I call no. Her name is, is Miss Bitch, and you know I'll acknowledge Lady is a little much, and I and they really don't rein Lady in. And Y'all, I'm not kidding. Is, I get off the elevator and I'm walking to Bob's thing, and at the exact opposite end of the hall is me. This dog, and it's like it's a, it's like a Great Dane poodle, so it's about as tall as me, and it is galloping at. Blah. I think it's a standard poodle. I think it's a standard poodle. Is it? It is a, a very big, big size. poodle. Though. It is a full size pool. It is a is huge galloping pool. at me, just coming down the hallway. No oh, yeah. one is holding a chain, Run, running, running Nothing. like a uh, running like Simba when he, when he's trying to get back to Pride Rock. <laughs> Literally, it was, it was like I see <laughs> way to here. <laughs> and the first time Bob did not alert me that this was an experience I would have come as a thing. So I hear, I hear the dog before I see it. I'm thinking, what is this like fucking stampede sound? So I go back to the elevator because I did not. Really know. loud because the floor is like hollow in the area. So you can hear her like, Girl, <laughs> it was terrifying. And I was like, lady, lady, 
lady, lady has got lady has tried to get lady tries to get into her home. Lady will try uh-uh. to get into her home. I feel like Mesh is gonna get back to Lady's own earth, but still, Lady tries Whatever. to get to her home. Yeah, she does. It's wild. And then, and then also, Bob, I forget to tell you this because of like LA, whatever, you can't, you don't really get cell reception in Bob's like hallway. Like, you wait till you get to the house with the Wi Fi. So I can't even text and be like, girl, I'm just like stuck in the fucking elevator. I have to like go back out the building to not even contact you. Late, lady is just, she's, she's playful, but she's never like, she barks sometimes. She does bark. Let me she tell you something. Bark. That one time when you think the dog is fine and then they're not. And then that's the gag. You're right. I'm not advocating for Lady. Lady which Lady's not my dog. I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you you act like like Lady's my fucking dog, bitch. I don't. I, I ain't possible for that goddamn dog. Take it up with take it up with the people who live in that apartment, honey. <laughs> um. Okay. So you're an advocate. So you think you said fuck these local bitches. Let them claw, steal, kill to get paid. Got it. I think it, I think it's good for the local queens to actually be able to go between bars. I don't think it's fuck the local bitches. I think it's, I think it actually serves them better to be able to bounce between bars than it does to be bound to a few, actually. So what you're saying also, is you're advocating for for big business. No, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not. That that puts more of the power I in the girls' hands, so they, can, so they can compete more. I think. You want, how does it how does it put power in the girls' hands? Because they can go to like if 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 Bob the drag queen is like hey J- so say so, hey Bob Montrelli um Justin's offering me seventy thousand dollars because like Bob is like no oh no I'll grow up, I'll pay you eighty five if you work if you if you just work at my three places like that puts more power also so also, also you get so whenever days. I work yeah. well every single bar that I work at I've been able to negotiate my pay even on individual gigs. So the the power of negotiation is still there. People can still negotiate their rates. But bitch, let me tell you something. The rate is still 150. These bars are still playing girls $150, Bob. That was the standard when I was when I first started uh t- t- what going on 11 years ago. That's still the standard. That's crazy to me. It should at least be 20. the the cost of living has more then what doubled? Not doubled. Okay, let's 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 let's. But the cost of living is drastically is drastically let's not, let's more. I get caught up for our for outrageous claims that we are known for making on the podcast. Even in the past two years, how much the cost of living has increased? They could have, they could they the standard should at least be two hundred dollars now. Rent's actually gone down in New York City a little bit. Well, you know what? You know what? The most expensive city to live in America. What? Yes. Mm, is it Brooklyn still? No, it hasn't been. It hasn't been New York for a while. San Francisco? Nope, close though. Uh, was it LA? San Diego. LA is second. Interesting. San Diego, um, LA, then San Francisco, the top three. New York is not even in the top five. Isn't that crazy? I would. I would have not guessed that, and I didn't guess it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and I would have guessed it, and I wasn't able to. No, I. I think that. It, it helps. I think it helps the girls to be able to move around, and also you can do those little guest spots. If girls are still even doing guest spots at each other's shows, I don't um, know. You know, when I used to work at Chick Fil A, I mean, oh, Jesus Chicken. Um, you can say the name. Back in my, I, I just like saying Jesus Chicken. It's just funny to me. <laughs> um, back in the day, um, we were paid. I was paid uh, five twenty five or five five dollars twenty five cents an hour, roughly, or five thirteen an hour. And a number one was about five thirteen. I had to work for one hour to be able to afford a meal at Chick Fil A. The price of a number one has since doubled. That's crazy. More than doubled, but the minimum wage is still the same. That's crazy. So how is your product twice as much, but the pay isn't twice as much? That's crazy. But I will say, of all the rest I worked at, they actually treat their employees. I hate to give them any benefit, but they they actually, they actually treat their employees really well compared to other restaurants. Like well, if, you, if you work, if you, if you if you manage Chick Fil A for a really long time, they will they will buy you a Chick Fil A. And if you work there for enough years in high school, they will pay for your college. Work. Isn't that crazy? And when, I, and I start, I started my four hundred one. I started my four hundred one k when I worked at Ruby Tuesday. You love a Ruby Tuesday. 
Um, I don't. What I what, another thing I will, really wish we would change is what we play. We pay bartenders and waiters waiters like a living wage like they do in Europe and in Australia and everywhere else and then so that when they do get tipped so they have a chance to make even more bank right if you're paying them like a fair wage first of all and then we get and then we tip them for a really good service as well like why can't they make bank like that would be fair I think the tips would go down, I think the tips would go down though <laughs> there, are, there are some restaurants that do pay a wage like a Waffle House doesn't pay so when you work at a uh, restaurant you can they can get away with paying below the minimum wage um, because tips. when I, I worked at Ruby Tuesday, I got paid two dollars and thirteen cents an hour, two thirteen an hour to work at or to work at. A, I used to get checks that were literally zero dollars, and um, but at Waffle House they pay you minimum wage. Or above. yeah, I think it would be fair if we paid like you know you 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 go in Australia or somewhere and you tip them on top of that. They're like they're like it's, it feels like even if, to them like they you I feel like you get like an even bigger reaction. They're like oh shit, I'm making a living wage and. You really you tip me like even on top of that like they really get off on that. I'm like why a big reaction like, like like you see them being like grateful for the tips or something like they'll be like or like they'll, 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 like for example when I went to Dai Shum in Australia and I had and I had lunch and I tipped on top of that and he was like oh wow thanks man I, well uh, um I, I can't fucking do an Australian accent don't even ask me to try to do an Australian accent but, right Mike thanks thanks a lot Mike it was great Appreciate yeah tip, I'm like Mike. yeah no problem and then that was it so are you tipping for the reaction. Yeah, are you, are you that's, that's, just, just, I'm not tipping because I fucking. I'm doing it. I, I'm doing it because I want to. I want to feel you praise me for tipping you. Yeah, it's honestly, it's low key giving that. You're being funny, but it's low key giving that. I'm dead ass. Like you think yeah. you're saving. I'm dead you're ass. Like saving them from Australia. I'm a savior. I am a. I am. I am the black savior. The black savior. You don't think you don't think Jesus was black? He was not. He no was one. White. No one, only, only, only a white person can be that damn mean and nasty and cruel. So you think Jesus was white? Yeah, black. So you said there's no way Jesus could have possibly been Asian. <laughs> black folks don't even have though, even though, even people though, of color don't have the propensity just, to be that mean. Even though Jesus was literally born in Asia, you don't think he could possibly be Asian? No. Even though he was literally born in Asia, I didn't say that. You said that. No one ever talks about the fact that Jesus is Asian. No one's having this conversation. Why is no one having the conversation that Jesus is Asian? Because that's not how he was described. He was described as being dark with, cur- with like he's described as literally out of olive skin. You don't think Asians can? You don't think Asians can be dark? Interesting. They can wow. be dark. Hey, everyone in Cambodia. Hey, everyone in Cambodia. <laughs> everyone in Thailand. I'm, I, I, all the Laotians. Everyone from Laos. I don't know. This is this is that was Monet exchanges voice. Monet no, think y'all no, no, all no, pale. Was, stop lying. You be lying on this spot. Oh, by the way, y'all y'all have really upped our reviews on um the apps on Spotify and Apple. You guys have given us a lot of review, of reviews recently, and I would please 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 ask that y'all do some more. They really help us. Y'all don't understand how these really help us with the algorithm and getting more people to, to view and see our podcast and to enjoy it and love it just like you. So keep on sending us them reviews, girl. We really appreciate it. Yeah. That's very kind of you all. Monet, before you go, do you want to acknowledge that Jesus is Asian? I want to. I will acknowledge that Jesus is a biscuit and I'm going to sop him up. Wow. You don't want to age. We have nothing. Wow. Remember, remember, remember what's the name, Kenya Michaels? Jesus, Jesus is a biscuit. <laughs> and on that note, y'all have a good day. <laughs>